In this video, we'll walk through the configuration options of the video module. Along the way, I'm going to change some of the default preferences to ones that better suit my personal preferences, and we'll also finally set up our account on Zencoder. So we're going to go to configuration, video, and we'll start at the beginning. In the general tab, there are really two sections here. The first two options have to do with how a video behaves when a user loads a page with the video on it. The rest have to do with what to do when you're posting a video. Automatically start video on page load. Uh, this does what it says. When the page loads, it'll automatically start playing the video. Uh, but be especially careful with this when you have more than one video on a page. Automatically start video buffering. This will start buffering the video when the page loads. Bypass video conversion. If you'll be converting videos to the appropriate format before you upload them, you can choose to bypass video conversion. This will prevent your videos from being sent to Zencoder and Amazon S3 and will serve the videos from your server. This option can actually be overridden when you post a video. Video convert on node submit. By default, videos will be sent to Zencoder according to cron settings, which we'll get to when we visit the cron settings tab. But using this setting, we can send each video to Zencoder when we save each node instead of waiting for cron to send it. This can also be overridden when you post a video. Override video thumbnails with default thumbnail. If you choose to use a default thumbnail for your videos, you can force that thumbnail to be used for all videos. Publish when conversion complete. This is now fully controlled by rules, and I'll show you how to configure this in a later video. In the Players tab, this is where you'll set which player to use for each video extension. I'm going to have Zencoder convert everything to an MP4, so that's the only thing I'm going to worry about. For the MP4 extension, I'm going to choose HTML5 player and select VideoJS. This is what I would recommend to ensure widest possible compatibility, uh, i.e. desktops and mobile browsers. If you prefer to use Flash only, you can install Flow Player and set the F4V and FLV extensions to use Flow Player. You'll also need to select the FLV preset instead of MP4, as I'll do later. However, to ensure mobile compatibility, I wouldn't recommend it especially now that Amazon has discontinued its development of Mobile Flash. And I'm done here, so I'm just going to save the configuration. In the Transcoders tab, I'm going to use Zencoder, and this is where we actually create our Zencoder account. All you need to do is fill in your email address and click Save Configuration. Now we see our API key and a password. It says that you can now log into the Zencoder website and track your transcoding jobs online. It says to make sure you save your username and password, uh, but what I would really recommend is to go ahead and copy your password and head over to the Zencoder website, which is at app.zencoder.com slash login, enter your email address and the password you just copied and go ahead and log in. And then click on account, users, and select your email address. And then right here, go ahead and change your password now so that's something you'll remember. And then you hit save changes. And now you don't have to worry about writing down or forgetting that password that it created for you. So let's head back over to our Drupal site. And if we scroll down, you'll see a couple of options. First is our number of thumbnails. This is the number of thumbnails that Zencoder will create for you to choose from. This does not affect what the end user will see, and we'll see this in action when we actually upload our first video. Dimension of thumbnails. These are the dimensions that Zencoder will use to export our thumbnails. The postback URL for Zencoder, don't change this. Zencoder needs this exact post URL and able to interact with your site. The output file base, however, needs to be changed. Since we're using S3, we're going to go ahead and set it to S3 colon forward slash forward slash and then our S3 bucket name. In my case, it was video.modulesunravel.com. 
and then I'll save it. In the Manage Presets tab, our first option is Use Preset Width and Height for Video Conversion. This will force all videos to use the dimension set in each preset. For example, if we click Edit next to the MP4 and scroll down, we see that the dimensions are set to 640 by 480. This means that Zencoder will export all MP4 files to 640 by 480. I'm actually going to increase this to 1280 by 720 so that any HD videos I upload will still look good. And I'm not going to check the upscale box so that my lower quality videos will keep their dimensions. So with that change, I'll save the preset. I'll also check the MP4 box and uncheck the FLV box. Again, I'm using the MP4 so that it'll play on desktop devices as well as mobile devices such as the iPhone and iPad. If you wanted to use Flash only, then you can go ahead and keep using the FLV format. In our metadata tab, we can alter the list of selectable dimensions when uploading videos. You can add or subtract from this list to better suit your site. I'm okay with what we have, so I'm not going to change anything. And finally, our cron settings. This is where you can configure the length of time a video is allowed to spend transcoding before it times out, as well as how many videos to convert during each cron process. For this series, the defaults are fine, so I'm going to leave them how they are.